All right, well, we're talking page speeds right now, and uh, that plane was going pretty fast. Now, notice that if you're going Mach 1, Mach 2, they're a measure of speed, but I need to let you know that when it comes to page speed scores with Google and YSlow, they're not a measure of speed. You can have a really fast page, but a slow page speed score. <laughs> Okay, so when it comes to your page speed score, it's not actually a measure of speed. All right, so remember that. You could have an A plus and it might actually be slower than when your page was an E or an F rating. So always take a look at the total page load time, not just the page scores, because you always want a faster loading web page. <laughs> So when it comes to your SEO score, does page speed matter? Well, yes it does, but it's about 1% at the moment. All right, but we have to remember that that 1% is the actual page speed's impact on SEO. But engagement does matter. You see, if you've got people clicking on your link in Google and not spending a lot of time on your page because it doesn't load and they leave before the page is fully loaded, that definitely impacts your SEO more. So we have to remember that the page speed score is only about 1% of your SEO uh, ranking, but how much people are engaged on the site is much more. And as we know, a faster loading page in total seconds is what really matters for your end users. So watch your page speed, not your page speed or why slow scores. <laughs> When it comes to Facebook advertising, you also have to remember that your page speed can affect your Facebook costs. So the thing is, there's a lot of people that have found out that the slower your page loads, the more it can cost you for your Facebook advertising. So if you have a fast loading page when it comes to people clicking on links or advertising from Facebook, you're going to get cheaper advertising costs at the end of the day. because. Facebook wants people to have fast experiences on the Facebook website. So keep that in mind if you're doing your Facebook advertising. Fast loading pages really help you manage the cost of your social media campaign. So, page speed, a little bit of a history around how it came about. Page speed and why slow scores came from the same thing, and that was Google and Yahoo noticing that people's pages weren't fast enough. So they created guidelines and a scoring system to know how to make your page run faster. These worked really well five years ago, but with changing technology, so the rules change as well. So still follow the guideline, use it, but keep a very close eye on your total page loaded time, and make sure that when you implement the changes that that total page load time is improving as well. What is the difference between HTTP2 and the first version of HTTP? Well, on the original version of HTTP, we were limited with how many files we could download at once. This meant that you had this staggered effect of a file being downloaded, then the next one, then the next one. This meant when you had lots of files, you ended up having to request lots of them all in a row, and that meant you had an increase in page time. Now, however, all the files get pushed at once from the server onto your browser client. This means that you're not waiting for all those files to stagger on, and it also means that having lots of small files can actually give you a speed benefit. So check your server has HTTP2 enabled, and that will affect how you impact and implement your page speed changes. So when it comes to page speed, there's four things that you want to measure. The first is your time to first byte. This is the time for when someone requests your website to the very first byte of that page being downloaded. You want to take a close look at that one because that's how well your server is positioned to the client as well as how well your server responds. The next one is the DOM loaded event. It's when the full HTML itself is loaded to the page. 
you want to check on that one because that's when the full HTML structure is ready for the CSS, JavaScript and images to begin to load. The next event you want to look at is your DOM loaded event. This is when the document object model is ready for JavaScript and all those items to begin to kick in on the page. Finally, the most important one is your page fully loaded event. This is when your page is completely loaded and ready to be used. So when it comes down for looking for culprits around what's slowing down your page, there's really three items that really slow it down that I wanted to raise with you today. The first is your server itself. If you've got a slow server and you're loading poor code on the back end of your website, well that's going to slow down your website. So when it comes to WordPress, be ruthless with your plugins. Unless you really need it, don't have it. And make sure that you're getting that time to respond down as low as possible for your server response time. The second item is your location. If you have a server in the United States, it's not going to load as fast in Australia as it does in the US. So make sure you're checking your location. Now that also means where your server is located does matter for your end clients. So you may want to take that into consideration or use a CDN to distribute your content. A CDN will allow your files to be all around the world and be served closest to the client that needs them. Finally, the biggest one is the content itself. And the biggest culprit, of course, is your images. Make sure that you compress your images as much as you can. Use image compression tools and make sure you set cache times that are appropriate for each image on those files. If you do those three things, you're well on your way to achieving excellent page speed scores. So what about tools? You know, we want to drive down our page speed. We want to get that time going lower and lower. There's some great tools that can help you. The one I really like is GT Metrics because it measures how everything's loading on my page and gives me a great way to drive down my page load times. So check out GT Metrics when you're measuring your page speed. And you can also monitor your pages as well. So if it starts jumping back up again, you'll know that there's been something that's caused that page to slow down. Remember, your best time isn't what matters, your average time is what matters. So use GT Metrics to get the most out of understanding your page speed. So today I've explained pretty much everything I know about page speed, but sometimes we need a practical way to be able to go about implementing it. So I've created a download form for each of you to be emailed my checklist that I use to be able to check page speed. We use it at our team here at Divi Framework and it includes things like checking your plugins, which plugins to use on which type of servers, as well as what types of things to do to improve your page speed and check all these items off to make sure you're gonna get great results for every page on your website. We also cover some how-tos in how to set up for GT metrics, all inside that checklist. Now we also have pre-registration on the same form for our upcoming e-learning platform, where we're gonna dive even deeper into how you can go about setting up and improving page speed, as well as doing other things in your WordPress and website development. If that interests you, just check the box on the registration form when you go to download your checklist, and we'll make sure that when we launch that e-learning platform that you guys get a very special discount to be able to be the first in to use our e-learning system. So I hope that excites you. I hope you've learned a lot about page speed, and go ahead, download that checklist and make sure that you're getting your pages loading faster, whether they're HTTP2 or HTTP1. I'll see you again in the next video. Oh, my God.